Okay. Somebody say, Jesus is more than enough. Somebody say, Jesus is more than enough. If you need sermon notes, the ushers have those. John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have what, y'all? Everlasting life. Three simple things that we need to see, and these are very simple things. Uh, number one, God loves the world. Number two, note, hold on, I got to stop. I went too fast. God loves the world. Now, see, y'all read this and say he, he loved Christians. He loves the world. He gave his only uh, son as a result of his love. And then number three, the purpose was for what, y'all? Everlasting life. Look at me, please. The purpose was not for your house. The purpose was not for your car. The purpose was not for your rings. The purpose was not for your vacation spot. The purpose of God giving his son was for everlasting life. We're not against houses and cars and vacations and no, no. But I just got to center us and, and ground us on, on what we already have. Say Jesus is more than enough. Three simple things that we need to do. Number one, receive the gift. And number two, believe on him. And then we need to have a focus on eternal life. There's this father that worked an entire year and he had fashioned it in a way where he was able to save the entire year's salary. And the only reason he wanted to save the salary is because he wanted to buy his son, his child, a very important and special gift. And so he took that year's salary after working and saving, and he buys this child this very special, important gift. He gives the gift to the child, child is excited. Dad, how could you do something so extravagant for me? He's moved to tears, lasted for about five minutes, and after that, the child begins to demand more, not knowing that the father had already given him his best. Be that many of you in this room and those of you that are online are just like this child. Your father has given you his best and the gift of his son only meant something to you for a week. And then after that, you begin to say, but where's my house? And where's my car? And where's my man? And where's my breakthrough? And where's my this? And God, I ain't had a baby yet. And I'm trying to have a baby. Where's my baby? We start making all these demands, not knowing. He said, can you just thank me for the gift I've already given you? Western Christianity has diminished the value of having a relationship with Jesus Christ. Western Christianity has diminished the value. There's significant value in our relationship with Jesus Christ. And we go to churches week after week, month after month, year after year, and we're not even excited about the gift that we already have, and that is in Jesus Christ. Why did Jesus come? Let's look at this. Why did Jesus come? Jesus came, somebody come fix that, please. Jesus came to redeem mankind. Uh, John 3 and 17 says, For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Look at now, now he's just fixing the TV. I'm right here, we good. Why did he come? He came to redeem mankind. Okay, uh, next, uh, what, thank you so much. Well, why did he come? Uh, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Okay, here, why did he come? To teach what, y'all? Come on, one more time, to do what? Teach the kingdom. He says right here, from that time that Jesus began to preach and to say, what did he say, y'all? 
repent. Why? For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew 4 and 17. But then here's something here. The reason Jesus came not only to redeem man, not only to preach the kingdom, but to start revival. Revival happens when re revival is like a barbecue. Barbecuers know the way, the proper way to start a fire is to separate coals, put them in a container, get them on fire, submerge them amongst the other coals to get them on fire. Okay, I'm going to do it this way. I'm, I'm not talking about the taste of your meat. I'm just talking about the maturity of your fire. Because when you don't know how to properly do it, you'll douse it with fluid, strike a match. It'll blaze up quick. You'll go in the house and come back and it's dead. The reason being is because it never penetrated the top layer. So even though it was hot, it never made anything else connected to it hot. This is why the disciples had to walk with Jesus, had to work with Jesus, had to obey Jesus. Everybody thinks it's about being grand to be a disciple. I grabbed, uh, I did some study, and I did our ministers and training, and I gave them 50 non-glamorous jobs disciples did following Jesus. And because it's not glamorous, this is why we don't get in a D group. Because there is no glamour in discipleship. It's grit. It's grind, it's work, it's sacrifice, it's submission, it's obedience, it's a breaking, watch this, of your will for the master's will. I'm a disciple, and you tell me to go get a donkey? I'm a disciple, and you tell me to go pay your taxes? I'm a disciple. I got a word in me. And you tell me, okay, go over there and be Mr. Hospitality and tell the people to sit down and rose? I'm, I'm a disciple. Okay, take this bread and pass it out. I'm a disciple. Hey, man, these people are hungry. Okay, go find something to eat for them. I'm a disciple. He didn't say, go pray. He said, hey, come watch me pray. Somebody say, Jesus is, more than Jesus is more than enough. We need to have, in the next few moments, an elevated awareness. An elevated awareness. What do you mean by that? We need to have an appreciation for his sacrifice. Jesus gave his life for people that question living for him. No, I love y'all. I do but not like Jesus. My girl's over there. I, I, we're not even gonna talk about life. I'm not getting a ticket for you. I'm not gonna walk in the rain for most of y'all. See, y'all judge me, but you're not gonna do it either. You just got your hair done. You're not gonna walk in that rain, girl. Y'all like, but a man of God should do it. You a woman of God, let's talk about you. Pastor, you wouldn't do that for me? It'll stop raining in a minute. No, when you think about, watch, what you would not do. Okay, watch this. How many of you, straight up, on your left or your right, you're sitting by a person you just don't know? Like, and you look at me like, I don't know them. Where you at? Come on. Come on. Okay. Very good, very good. Stop being stuck up. Introduce yourself. Go quickly, 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 quickly. Okay, he got a phone number. I see you, dude. I see you. He working. He working. I see him. He got a phone number. Okay, 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 okay. 
Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Jesus died for people he never met. There has to be an appreciation for his sacrifice. Number two, there needs to be an acceptance of his accomplished work. What do you mean by that? We have to be careful that we allow entertainment, Hollywood, and media form who Jesus is in our minds. Okay. Does anybody have any family members that won't view you as who you are now? They only view you as who you were. Put my first picture up there. Put my first picture. See, see, many of us, when we think about Jesus, when we think about Jesus, this is the Jesus that comes to mind. Now, I know some of y'all, we're not doing ethnicity. I'm talking about position. Because you can't have no white man in front of all, and with all them black people. This, no, no, see, no, no, we got everybody here. Come on, I'll you. This is the representation of when you think of Jesus, this is the image that we see. So it's branded in your mind that this is, no, my point, my point, my point, the acceptance of his accomplished work. This is not accomplished work. This is work in progress. And when you don't accept accomplished work, you're always thinking that all you got to do is get on a cross. I'm about to jump off this stage when he already took everything and put it on the cross for you. Next picture, please. Next picture, please. That this is who got. You can serve the Jesus that's still suffering. I'm serving the Jesus that's already accomplished, God dog it, death, hell, and the grave. So when I approach my spiritual big brother, I don't do it like, oh, see them. I need so I'm like, hey, JC, this your boy, this VC. I need you to get daddy to move on my behalf because if he got you out of that situation, I know you can get me out of my situation. That's why when I say the name Jesus, first picture, first picture, first picture, first, I'm not talking to that. Second picture, second picture, I'm talking to that. So, so when the doctor, so, when, I, when I'm sitting there and the doctor walks in and he says, you have cancer. And I say, Jesus. 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 What I'm doing is I'm calling on the name that's greater than every name. I'm calling on the name that overcame the grave. I'm calling on the name that demons have to tremble at. I'm calling on the name that my grandmama used to call. I'm calling on the name that at every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. I'm calling on the name that saves generations. I'm calling on the name that defeated the grave. I'm calling on the name I need to have, watch this, an elevated appreciation for his accomplished work. Watch this. This is going to get a little gangster right here. I, 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 have, an, I have a boldness to stand on faith to overcome, somebody say, anything. Now, now listen, now somebody will tell you, 
You can overcome everything. That, listen, my Bible says, with God, all things are possible. Put some word on it, Pastor Campbell. Here we go. Hebrews 12 and 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with, with a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run, when it's saying run with patience, run the race of faith, watch this, with patience, the race that is set before us. Hebrews 12 and 2. Looking, see, 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 this is why I have such a boldness that I can come overcome anything. I just, I have three books in print right now. I have I Believe, I have Too Tough to Lose, and I have uh, uh, Focus, uh, uh, a book on focus. Extre uh, no, I'm sorry, Extreme Discipline, The Art of Focus. The reason I can get excited about my book is because I'm the author. Y'all miss it. Watch. You only know the title. I know the chapters and the content. When you open the first page, you don't know what journey I'm taking you on. But the scripture says he's the author and the... <laughs> he already knows that if you stay in faith, how this thing is going to finish. So this is why in the midst of whatever you're going through, you can still give God a praise. Watch because I'm not finished. You can still give God a praise because Jesus already, he's the author and the finisher of our faith. Looking unto Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised the shame and is set down at the right hand of the, of the throne of God. Now, that don't mean a lot, but listen to this. And is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. The reason that I call on the name of Jesus because he is my chief intercessor. So this is why the enemy is causing churches to say stuff without Jesus. There are a lot of sermons being preached and the name Jesus never comes up. There's, there's a lot going on right now. Churches are growing. Guys are good, guys are popular, got a lot of followers, but where's Jesus? I didn't listen to 15 clips, no Jesus. No principle about him, no mention of him. But see, the reason I want to make sure that I'm calling on his name, because watch this, I pray, watch, to the Father in the name of Jesus. Okay, I gotta go back. Right we don't pray to Jesus. He's not the Father. He says, I'm here on my father's business, means I'm employed by the boss. But we pray to the father in the name of Jesus. Watch. So I'm praying to Jesus. What's the big deal, pastor? Because he's sitting at the right hand of the father. The reason I have to pray to the father in the name of Jesus, because he filters my filth. Oh, you think you good enough to just talk straight to God? With what you, can I put on the screen what you did this week? I got this guy's information. Pull it up, right? Can I pull up some of the thoughts you've had this week? Can I put on the screen some of the words you said this week? Anybody that nominates, I can put your sin on the screen from just this week. Please wave your hand. I see no hands. You know why? It's because we understand that we are a work in progress, but when we go to a pristine God, we need a powerful Savior. <laughs> Say elevate it. Reasons why we feel like Jesus isn't enough. We got to move. Here we go. You've attached your value and worth to your assets. You've accepted the world system of validation. 
you, you, you think as long as you got a snatched up waist and a jiggly backside, So you flying out the country, getting fat out your butt, out your stomach, put in your butt. Because you want to be validated by the world's standards. No, and then, and then we do stuff. I'm going to mess up. It's all good. I ain't scared of nobody in here. We do stuff like, and then, and then we have all this, this typism and stuff that if you got Indian in your family. Well, what's wrong with the people that's got straight Ethiopian in their family? That might not be your preference, but it's somebody else. We, we make stuff better than the other, and then when you don't have what people tell you on a repetitious basis, you feel less than, and you don't feel validated. He got to be six fold. Look, man, this all I got. <laughs> Lady C, you got to work with this. But when you grab a hold to me, woo! That's all I got. But don't grab me. 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 <laughs> Go get yourself together. Get some ice water. Get yourself together. Don't grab me. <laughs> don't grab me. No, no, fellas, listen. And then society tells you that they like them 6'2", and you doing... No, do you not know guys are getting surgery right now to make themselves taller? Can't walk but taller. Because the world... Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? You got to be this weight. You got to be this size. You got to have this amount of hair. Can't have a bald head. If you have a beard, it's got to be this thick. You can't. Come on, man. Like, why do we buy into the world system of validation? I am a child of God. That's all I need. Reasons why we feel like Jesus is enough, you've attached your value and worth to your assets. Number two, you've accepted the world system of validation. Number three, you prefer to get more than be more. So rather than be who God wants you to be, you trade that in to get what God has available for you. Matthew 16 and 26 says, For what is a man profited? Is your gain the whole world? and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Here's another reason we feel like Jesus isn't enough. Our songs are about us and what we want versus who he is and what he's already done. Here's another reason. Sermons that build you versus build a kingdom are prevalent. The average Christian don't come to church to build a kingdom. We come to get our breakthrough. And I'm not against your breakthrough. We need to be broken through so we can help somebody else break through. But when do we come to say, hey, let's have a meeting before worship starts. Today is just all about the kingdom. Today is about us being strong enough to make a difference in somebody's life. God, give me a word that I can give somebody on my job. No, we're like, give me my word so I can get my breakthrough, so I can get my money, so I can get my, 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 And you get the Johnny Gill spirit. My. Then we say stuff like this. Check this out, check this out, check this out. So then we'll have the audacity to sing, say stuff like this. Worship will go 20 minutes. They ain't saying none of my songs. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> and so you'll sit as if the songs are supposed to make you feel good 
versus edify the one that we're singing about. Oh, I just, you, I see people, they turn up when they sing, we sing an old song. I just turn up, that's what I grew up on. That's, that's what I grew up on right there. That's what I'm talking, I love when she sang them type of song. Then we sing something modern, you like, All them words, all them words. Then you start being a detective. When they gonna cut that smoke down? <coughs> That's my asthma. Because you've made worship about you and not the one we're worshiping. Could you imagine being in heaven with someone and we're singing and you're like, I'm gonna wait to the next song. I don't like that one. I'm I'm gonna wait. Y'all going and worship him. I, I'm gonna wait. That, that, that don't do nothing for me. I thought your worship was unto him. We want the sermon to make us feel good. We want the worship to make us feel good. We want the prayer to make us feel good. And it's all about him and not you. Now, can you benefit out of it? Yes. Are y'all tracking with me? Yes. Here we go. Let's get to my pastor's point and we're going to go. Let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. I want to tell you this right here. Stop working so hard for the free stuff when you've already received the most valuable possession. Please stand. Please stand. What do you mean by that? Romans 8 and 32, here it is on the screen. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for, for who? Can I mess with about eight church people right quick? Stop making Jesus just for you. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. My scripture right here, my scripture right here, uh, please. it says, he delivered him up for us Oh, that's before you were saved. So if it was before you were saved, why do you now only make it Jesus of your salvation and not Jesus of the unsaved still? He's for black people and white people and my Spanish speaking brothers and sisters. He's, he's for everybody. Okay, here we go. He's for gay people and lesbian people and people that don't have an identity that they want to. That's sin. That's sin. He ain't with that mess. I just asked you, could I put your sins on the screen? You said no. So is your sin different from their sin? Oh, you got saved sin? Now, did I, did I, no, I'm, no, 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 some, some of y'all, I know, I know my church people. I didn't say he was for that. He's for people. Because when I got saved, I wasn't already saved. See, y'all make it seem like, well, no, I was a Christian, but I became a Christian. No, you were a sinner, and you became a Christian. So don't rob another sinner of the opportunity of becoming a Christian because you made Jesus not for them. I'm preaching hard just for you. I need to finish my scripture. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Watch this. How shall he not with him also do what? Free. Somebody say it's free. free. You know why it's free? Because he already paid for it. But watch this, fellas. Well, why are we buying into the world and working so hard for free stuff? Now, I'm not preaching this, go home and manifest. No. You gotta work, you gotta have a job. 
y'all, y'all are mature, y'all are with it. What I'm saying is we've redefined the real essence of what Jesus came for and what he means to us. And we're not really growing in him, but we're growing in the world standard. And you killing yourself for people that's trying to fire you next week. You're missing out on your children trying to buy them more stuff. Why don't you teach them Jesus? When is the last time your kids heard you pray? When is the last time you prayed with your kids? When's the last time you prayed over your kids? When is your last time your kids seen you do something, have the opportunity to do something ungodly, but you chose godly? But I guarantee if I ask, when the last time you heard kids heard you cuss? When the last time the kids seen you twerk? When the last time the kids told you to lie? When the last time the kids, kids saw you, seen you get high? When the last time the kids seen you pull up your porn site? No, listen, somebody say he's enough. enough. No, you got to get that, that, hey, I have Jesus. Yeah, I want a house, but, but, hey, but I'm not less than them. I got Jesus. Let me encourage two or three of my fellas right quick. I I was in our apartment, 411 Springwater Drive, and uh, all of our friends, they they had townhouses, they, they had houses, and and I'll never forget, man, one of my homegirls, she invited us to a Christmas party. And uh, I went to high school with them. April, if you're watching, what's up, Regina? Um, and her and her husband at the time, he's deceased now, Big Kenny. They had a nice house, man. Me and my wife went. Everybody was enjoying themselves but me. Because I'm sitting in their house and I'm looking, I'm like, he got this house, man. He had a new truck. She had a nice car. And watch this. He tall. <laughs> Most are calling Big Ken. And Big Ken was like 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. I'm like, <laughs> And I'm driving. I was like, you all right? Yo, I'm good. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I had to grow as a man of God Amen. to understand that my value and worth as a man is not tied up in real estate. Now, now that don't mean be lazy, don't work. No, I had aspirations, but I was doing the best I could do right then. Now, we've gone on and had four, five, six houses in that time, just finished the retreat center. The point that I'm saying is at that level, I was buying into what the world said a good man was. When I forgot at the time, I got Jesus. Because if I didn't have Jesus, I wouldn't be married. If I didn't have Jesus, I wouldn't have picked not just a good looking woman, but a God good looking woman. If I didn't have Jesus, we probably wouldn't have been married at that point to go to the party because, I mean, one of us was going to first 48 somebody. <laughs> no, what I'm trying to say is you're working so hard for the free stuff, valuing yourself on what's already been paid for. When every man in here, if you love God and you're saved and you're living towards pleasing him, that right there is the foundation of being a good man. And ladies, let me tell you something. It's your pastor. I love you now. Let me tell you. Now, if you got a God man and a good man, just work with him. Work with him. Okay, okay. I'm going to do this one. We're going to go. I got a guy. I got a guy. I got a guy. I got a guy. Nice guy. He's a nice guy. He got an old car. I mean, it's an old raggedy car, really. But he, he, he washed it, but it's old. Um, he stayed with his mom. Hold on, let me finish. <laughs> I 
I'm trying to finish, and they moaning. And he said, I can't even finish my sermon. God, dog. As I was saying, nice guy. Watch this. Loves the Lord. He got a raggedy car. It's old. Stay with his mama. He's trying to get off the ground with his career, and he got bad credit. Then they go interrupt my sermon again. And then they're gonna be like, he let us out too late. Could y'all hush? <laughs> Just off that description, who wants to date that guy? Who wants to date that guy? I don't see no hands. Okay, I see one. I got one in a possible. Hey, 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 everybody, look at me, look at me. Hey, everybody, look, I'm that guy. I'm that guy. I was driving an 85 Pontiac Bonneville, no more football, at home with my mama, with a 496 Beacon score, and getting my company up off the ground, and she worked with me. Now, she, she needed some help because her mama told her, she said, her mama told her, she said, no, baby, he, he, he got, put, like, you work with him. He ain't allergic to work. He's a good man. Like, work, he got potential. Like, now, I ain't talking about no, don't, just gonna go down to the pound and get nobody, ladies. <laughs> See, some of y'all are getting mixed up. He at home smoking up weed and playing video games. No, that, that, I wasn't doing that. I wasn't doing that. I wasn't doing that. Next scripture, here we go, here we go. But seek ye first, kingdom of God. And what? Jesus. Seek his what? See, we just want the kingdom, we want the kingdom. No, you gotta be righteous. And all this stuff you killing yourself for, all this stuff that the world is telling you is first, it's not first. It's a part of the process, but it's not first. Seeking him and the power of Jesus and his righteousness, that's what's first. Do you know why we need to elevate our mindset? Because most of you all check me off your list because of natural stuff that I could get later. I said I, I, was, I love God and y'all like that don't count that's why you'll take a man that's got all the worldly stuff and you can't even get him to come to church let us pray Father we love you we thank you for the power of this house in the name of Jesus Today, we just want to remind ourselves that you're not a God that's against stuff. You're not a, a God that, that's against growth or movement. You just want us to love you more than the things that you provide for us. Thank you right now in the name of Jesus that you've been glorified and our spirits have been lifted. Thank you for this subtle reminder that Jesus you're more than enough.